Welcome back everyone to the Dark Forest. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and telling a friend. We have now began the month of August, which means the end of the heat wave is finally going to be departing. Eventually. Make sure to download your favorite scary story on my Apple Podcast and Spotify, Tales from the Dark Forest. Now let's get spooky. I love being an archaeologist. I really do. After struggling through minimum wage kitchen and retail work, it was truly a dream come true to get my first job in archaeology last year. My first job was working for a national commercial company in England, going from working in a cramped attic pub kitchen to traveling the country excavating Roman farms and Anglo-Saxon cemeteries was truly a life-changing experience, and for once, I was looking forward to going to work. But some things that were buried in the past should remain buried. I know that now. Let this story be a warning to those who go out searching for our past. Some things were forgotten for a reason. It all started late last year, after spending half a year working away. I got a job working for a local archaeology company so that I could stay home with my girlfriend. The office was a five-minute walk from my house. Everything seemed perfect. My first project was a site just outside the city. A late Roman Iron Age site, and a rather special one at that. The finds and the shape of the site indicated a temple, or at the very least a shrine, which for a relatively inexperienced archaeologist was exciting. And for the first six weeks work carried on as normal, but my decision to excavate one large pit changed everything. The pit lay just south of the main temple complex, and on first view, there really wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It was just a large, circular pit, but once I began digging, I started to uncover deer antlers. Not just one or two, but about ten. I say about ten, as one was just the part of the antler. Again, a little strange, but nothing extraordinary. But what was, was a ring of antlers placed at the bottom with a pile of copper coins laying in the middle. After the standard archaeologist finding and taking photos, it was time to bag up the antlers and move them into temporary storage. Now the temporary storage on site was a shipping container used to store tools and findings until they are picked up and moved to the company's archives. This was when it all began. It was a cold December Friday afternoon when I placed the bagged antlers into the container. And after packing up the rest of my tools and saying goodbye to everyone, I went home for the weekend not thinking much of it. Arriving to work on Monday, and after opening the container, I was greeted by a split bag of antlers lying on the floor. At the time, I didn't think much of it. I assumed that I had just left the bag on top of the pile, and it had slipped off over the weekend. So I just picked it up and put it by the finds box. Two weeks went by and the site drew to a close. As it was close to Christmas, there was no new site starting up until after New Year's. So me and my colleagues on the site went to spend the week before Christmas working in the archives. The building that housed the archives is an old run-down building estate, way out there, with very poor heating and very creepy building to say at the best. But sitting in the room cleaning skeletons and other findings with a toothbrush really adds to the aesthetic. It was the last day before the Christmas break, and the vast majority of the findings had been cleaned boxed and were ready to be taken down to the archive. However, one bag remained. The bag of antlers. Now I have completely put out of my mind the thought of the bag of antlers spilling out onto the container floor, but I was amazed by how well preserved the antlers were. After being cleaned of dirt, even after being in the ground for nearly 2,000 years. But nevertheless, they were cleaned, placed in a box, labeled, then took them down to the archives and placed onto a shelf. Once this was done, it was almost time to go home for Christmas. It was already dark out by this point, and the lighting in the archive really isn't the best. After all, it's an old building. Me and my four colleagues... All of us in our 20s 
decided the best use of our remaining time we had on shift would be to turn off all the lights in the archives and hide between the shelves. Basically a game of hide and seek. Mature, I know. So one of my colleagues flicked off the lights and we began to hide. All I could see was the silhouette of the shelves in the dull green light being emitted from the emergency exit lights. One after the other, I could hear the screams of laughter as people were caught leaving only me left. Well, so I thought. I began to slowly slide between the shelves, making my way to the light switch with the intention of switching them on and scaring everybody. After five minutes of shuffling quietly to the switches, something caught the corner of my eye. My first thing that sprung to mind was, shit, they found me. But to my surprise, the shape didn't move. It just stood there against the backdrop of the green light highlighting its silhouette. It was tall, almost seven feet by my reckoning with two large objects protruding from its skull. The objects, antlers. I stood there stunned for what seemed like an eternity before I managed to muster enough strength to scramble towards the light switch and turn the light switches on. And as soon as I did, the figure had vanished into thin air. I rushed over to where it stood with renewed energy, almost angry that my mind was playing tricks on me. That's where I saw something that shocked me to the core. A box placed in the center of the aisle between the shelves where the figure had stood. I recognized the handwriting on the box. It was mine. And what was written on the box? Antlers. I got out of there that day without telling anyone what I saw. They must have seen that I was spooked. If they did, they didn't say anything. Throughout the Christmas break, I had constant nightmares of being locked in the dark archives with this figure stalking me between the shelves. I still try to rationally explain what I saw. Luckily, after the Christmas break, I was back out on site. I haven't been to the archives since, and I don't plan to. Me and my girlfriend are moving away in a couple of months, and I will need to find myself a new job. I love being an archaeologist. I really do. But after that experience, I've been constantly looking over my shoulder, worrying should I continue being one. Or... Should I look for a new career? Hey y'all. Mildly spooky story that actually just happened. My friend and I are on our way from Chicago back to our home in Evansville, Indiana. As such, we have to drive through the Midwestern country to get there. Pitch black highways surrounded by trees and cornfields. About four hours away from home, my friend screams and I look up. We hit a deer going 50. The poor guy bounced off the front end and is probably dead on impact. We come to a stop and commiserate, call our parents, etc. We are stranded on a quiet highway in the middle of nowhere, trees to our right and a few houses a bit farther off to our left, all surrounded by trees and cornfields. My friend is standing outside surveying the damage when we hear a scream, a man scream a bit farther off to our left. My other friend and I are looking at each other wide-eyed. A few minutes pass and we hear it once again. I make a joke about skinwalkers and my friends get back into the car. A bit later, after calling 911, we hear another scream. A woman this time, and it seemed closer. We waited on the deputy and nervously joking about whether it's skinwalkers or some crazy elderly people and my friend facing the trees suddenly laughs nervously and rolls up the window. I just heard clicking noises out my window, and I'm rolling it up because I'm not going to pretend I didn't just hear them. Anyways, now we're back on our way. The car is drivable, and out of skinwalker country, or whatever the hell it was. Just something spooky that happened and I thought I would share. Hi. I hope this is the right place to post this. I just got back from a two-night camping trip on Lopez Island in Washington State. Beautiful area. 
We left home on Thursday morning and arrived at the campsite around 2 p.m. or so. We stayed at Audlin County Park. It was just me and my girlfriend. The only other person at the entire site came last night and it was an elderly man in a cargo van of some sort, probably five plus spots away towards the entrance of the camp. We were pretty far into the camp and we had one of the last spots that were available. Past us was just woods and trails. We went to bed in our tent probably around 12 or so the first night. Right around 1 or so, I think, is when we started to fall asleep. But I woke up fairly soon to some strange sounds. There were a few sounds of sticks and stuff breaking, but nothing loud enough for it to be more than a chipmunk or raccoon. Those kind of sounds didn't bother me too much. What freaked me out is I kept hearing loud knocking noises. Usually one or two at a time as if someone was banging a stick or rock against a tree loudly. It sounded like it could be anywhere from as close as 50 feet or so from our site up to 100 or so feet away. It's hard for me to gauge distance of how the sound was traveling there, as I don't normally camp in the woods like this. I was pretty tired, so I didn't do a good job recording the intervals or length or anything like that. But I'd say it would go on for a few minutes at a time, stopping for about 30 minutes or so, and then start again, probably 30 to 60 seconds between knocks. Doing some googling the next morning, I can't seem to find any reasonable explanation. Everything says Bigfoot, lol. I watched a video saying, Mysterious woods knocking sound soft, and it was a chipmunk. The sound wasn't very similar to what we were hearing. The sound I heard was much louder. I also saw some people saying that it could be a woodpecker. Again, this sound was much louder. Now, I was figuring that it was just some sort of wildlife noise, and it probably still is. But I thought that it was odd that the next night, we didn't hear anything. Being Friday night, there was actually other campers, and I listened for it all night when everyone else was quiet. Still, couldn't hear anything. I'll add that the first night, I felt quite uneasy and sort of like I was being watched. And the second night, I felt normal. Though I do get anxiety sometimes, I could be overthinking that. Any ideas? Thank you. I'm a hiker. I have been my whole life. From frozen tundras to barren deserts, I've spent my free time in nature. If you hike, I'm sure you know about the little details you find. Some clothing, trash left by careless hikers, and occasionally a bag full of somewhat useful materials. However, sometimes you find something super rare, just as I have. Last week, I arrived in Virginia to hike the Blue Ridge Mountains. I have a week off of work. So I figured what better way to spend it than a nice scenic walk through one of the most beautiful mountain ranges the United States has to offer. I arrived with a light load of gear. I knew it would be a semi-easy trek. I got a ride to where I wanted to start, a nice trail called Skyline Drive. I had food, water, my laptop, a mobile charging port, first aid, and my tent. Day one was easy. I met a few nice people along the way and took in the sights. I got some great photos with my phone. I even saw a black bear alongside a few deer. I began to feel uneasy though, for seemingly no reason at all. It wasn't that feeling of being watched, just light dread. I shook it off, because if I could handle hiking the apps two years ago, I could handle this. I made it pretty far before I found a lightly overgrown trail. I followed it, and eventually I was all by myself in the wilderness. The sounds of cars were replaced by wind whispering through the trees, and the leaves crunching under my feet. As the sun began to set, I found a nice spot to set up my camp. I crawled into my sleeping bag, and as soon as I closed my eyes, it was morning again. I woke up, had a protein bar, and began to pack my stuff up. As I had my tent folded up and packed away, I froze. I got chills. 
Something was watching me. I could feel it. I slowly turned my head to see a deer moving slowly, making no noise as it walked. Its neck was bent backwards, and it gurgled as it breathed. I shook until I remembered chronic wasting disease, which ate the brain of a deer until it could no longer function. It was heartbreaking to watch the creature go on its way. Day 2. Not off to a great start. The clouds were rolling in. It was going to be a rainy day. I walked through the woods staring at my feet. I was feeling fatigued, for no reason at all. Felt rain cover my head and shoulders. I shivered. This fatigue was new. I fell to my knees to catch my breath, and I stared at the ground. I am an EMT. I am always on the move, and I am extremely in shape. Why was this happening to me? As I raised my head, I was horrified by what I saw. About 20 yards in front of me, peering out from behind a tree, was the most awful thing I had ever seen. A face covered by a wicked, soulless grin with eyes wide, covered in scratch marks. My fight or flight kicked in. I grabbed my pocket knife and stood to confront this abomination. But as soon as I did, and its head rolled back while its lower jaw stayed in place, a deep guttural scream knocked me to my feet. I covered my ears and got into a ball. I felt my body shake, and covering my ears was futile. It screamed only louder. I wept, begging God to make this abomination stop. Soon, I blacked out. I woke up on my back, facing the canopy of the trees. Light rain fell upon my face. I was looking around and noticed that I was far away from my belongings. In fact, I could barely see my stuff through the trees. I did my best to muster myself to my feet, and I hauled ass. As I ran, I began to hear a second set of footsteps behind me. Then, the scream again. It sounded like a boat horn. My fear was overcome by rage. Screw it. I was going to turn around and kill this son of a gun. I turned around, and my jaw slacked open. An eight-foot-tall beast, as skinny as the images of POWs you see rescued from Japanese POW camps, with the same wretched smile, was running at me. I fell upon my back as it ran right over me, stomping on my chest. I coughed and watched it disappear from my view. Its screams induced rage. I am not normally a violent person. Its sounds must have had an effect on my hormones. I found it tough to breathe, but adrenaline kept me going. I sprinted back to my gear. As I did, I noticed a GoPro on top of my backpack. This seemed like some kind of sick joke, but it was very real. I struggled to get my stuff together, and I heard it bound through the forest. It stopped right behind me. I felt its hot breath on the back of my neck. I turn around, staring up at it. Its teeth were yellow and stained by blood. Its eyes were bloodshot, and its face was wrinkled and bloodied, as if it had been here for centuries. It stood no further than six inches from me. I was too scared to move. Then, with a swift motion, its skinny but strong arms grabbed my legs and snapped them right there. I woke up feeling no pain. It must have been a dream. At least, that's what I hoped until the cold rain brought me back to reality, and I looked down at my damaged legs. They were broken, and moving was out of the question. I knew that I had to get out of there, and fast. I reached into my pack to grab my radio, only to be met with the horrifying realization that it wasn't there. It was gone. I grabbed my tent and crawled to make a shelter. I was only able to get three stakes into the ground, but it was enough to shield me from the rain. I got in and immediately opened up my laptop. Maybe. Just maybe I could send out an SOS signal somehow. I knew it was not going to send, but tried anyways. I felt dread set in, as I knew that I wasn't getting out of this one. As my mind began to wander, I wondered if anyone would find my body, and if maybe another hiker would find me and save me, or... More than likely, meet my same fate. As I wondered, my attention turned back towards that broken, mud-covered GoPro. 
I took out the memory card and placed it into my laptop. Hours upon hours of footage showed up, and I figured that if I was going to sit here, I might as well try to figure out what was going on. The first video that came up only displayed the ground and a pair of legs wearing camouflage pants and military boots. It rotated up to reveal a young man, probably 19, in his military gear. Hey mom, if you're watching this, I'm already dead. He began to laugh after saying the joke, and panned the camera around to show his buddies and his unit. The next video was inside of his barracks, and it was just a bunch of young soldiers goofing around. The next video was taken inside of a trunk of some kind, with our soldier joking about the driver in some training mission. I watched as he got in and when they started driving. I was met with a familiar sight. They were going up Skyline Drive. Our soldier roared his camera around, holding it goofily close to his face before joking about the training that he and his unit were about to go through. Frickin' terrain navigation, reading maps and crap, gotta love it. I was getting attached to these soldiers and the hijinks they got up to. So far, our soldier, Mac, and his buddies, Rich and Puck, were making the best out of their time and their training. I almost forgot about my grim situation. I kept watching to distract myself. My stomach dropped as I watched the group follow my exact same path. I am exactly where they stood just three days ago, according to the date on the recording. Rain fell as our soldiers joked about the great weather and made light of the situation. They all had night vision goggles on, nods, and they were trying out their gear. As they walked, the guy at the front froze. Puck, what the heck is wrong with you? Mac asked. He was silent and unmoving. Puck, you good? No response. Puck! Mac grabbed Puck's shoulder and looked at him. Puck's face was crinkled and a weeping face. Did you see that, Mac? Did I see what? That... thing. Mac stood there in silence. Puck, what thing? Mac asked. Mac, it wasn't human. Mac grew frustrated. Hey, Rich, radio in to the lieutenant that Puck's checked out, or he's seeing things. Rich clicked on his radio, only to be met with static. Man, it's not working. Mac, try this. Mac tried his. Static. Mac seemed to grow uneasy. You hear that? Asked Mac. Yeah. The sound of footsteps thundered towards the trio. The beast threw the group down and they panicked. Reverting to training, Mac managed to say, Permission to engage. Shoot the thing, Rich said. The pair opened fire and Puck followed suit. They watched the beast run around them and the bullets impacted it. They seemed to have no effect. Then, the boat horn sound rang out. All three of the men screamed and they wept. Puck could be seen standing up before a shot rang out and he fell. Puck just shot himself! Rich yelled. Mac stared at the body of his friend. The boat horn continued. Mac turned his head to watch Rich put his rifle in his mouth and shoot. Mac said nothing. He just reached and grabbed his rifle. But the beast knocked it out of his hand. Mac stared up at the beast, which was staring back. It opened its mouth and screamed. Mac wept and drew his pistol and fired into the beast. It had no effect, and it promptly flung him through the woods and through the air before coming to a stop miles away. The camera didn't move. The beast could be heard in the distance getting closer. The camera slowly panned up to reveal a grinning face. It was held so close, I slammed my laptop shut. I took a deep breath. I couldn't feel my legs. I still can't. I hear it running again. It's coming. I'm going to upload this in hopes that maybe it gets through. March 3rd, 
2022.